Julie and welcome back to my channel. I have been working this week on some things for my Etsy shop, some springy things and also for my little summer shop. I've, I tell you what, I'm behind. I'm trying to get some things made up. Um, and so I brought back a, a design that I have in my Etsy store, this little tempo, this little packets. Many of you have already purchased it. I will link it down below for you. Um, I've got a couple sheets where it shows and shares some of the um, supplies that I used picture of the of the actual little project and also the YouTube link um, that where I've created these um, and then it comes with the with the design the bunny design in two different sizes and I did two projects with using the large bunny one project this week using the small bunny and I'm going to share those with you and then during this video I'm going to create another project using the little bunny just to share with you some of the things I made. With the big bunny, I did a wall hanging. This is a really fast technique. It's just a scrappy patchwork. We're gonna be doing the same technique on the project today. The back has the little, the little doll hanger. I did a pillow using the large bunny. And then I did a little journal cover using the small bunny. One of the things I wanted to share with you today is this, I've been practicing this week, just trying to get my technique a little bit better with the free motion zigzag. And you, I'm able to, you're able to do a free motion zigzag and really get some texture. And I love it with, for fur or for an animal. It's just a easy way to add that little extra. It's, and it's just so quick to do. And so I've been gonna share with that, that with you today um, in the, on the next project. I think we're going to be making just a zippered pouch using this same little bunny. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Some of my supplies that I'm using, I do have my smaller template. I have my zipper. My pieces are all cut 9 inches by 11 inches. I do have a water soluble stabilizer that I'm going to be using for my design. I do have this fusible fleece. It's fusible on one side. My lining piece, again, cut nine by 11. And then for the backing, I'm using a quilted muslin. Everything listed, I have listed down below for you if you wanna use the same supplies that I am using. I'm gonna be building this front of this patchwork on this fusible fleece. So the, the fusing is up, or the adhesive is up. And I just have some scraps here. Love this piece. Um, it's, it's a great background piece because it has some script on it. But that's where my bunny is going to be. My bunny will show up really well for that with that, I think. Also going to be just adding, again, just cutting and just um, adding this to cover this fusible fleece. This is raw edge patchwork. And then for this final couple, I do add a darker green, I believe, and then um, for the very top one, I'm going to be using that same striped cream and, and blue stripe, only the stripes I'm going to put in the opposite direction. I have this piece of, it's like a hem tape. I got it at the thrift store, it's a, or it's, but it's lace. Um, and that is in a really pretty rose color. And I think I'm going to add some color to the bunny's nose and ears. So I thought that that lace is going to sh really show that off. I'm just ironing this into place just to get that all fused. That lace, of course, I'm, is not going to um, fuse. So I'm going to just add a little bit of school glue and just get that into place. School glue, once it's dried, does not gum up your machine at all. And it's great for these quick little, you know, if you need, just need to get something down before you get it to the sewing machine. If it happens to get someplace where you don't want it, it's completely washable as well. This is the backing, it's just this quilted muslin. I just wanna add this one strip. I am gonna sew this and then flip it down. It's sewn, yep, pressing it down. And then I'll top stitch that just to add some detail. So that's done and it's back to my little front. I'm taking this back to my sewing machine. I'm just gonna straight stitch that lace into place. And then it's on to my decorative stitching and I'm using multicolored threads 
just to add some just a fun look really quick fun look to the to the front and getting these patchworks down you can see that one and this is one of my favorite everybody's machine has different um, decorative stitches and if it doesn't use zigzag or use your feather stitch And just thought I'm going to add one more little piece of, of trim to this. This is a piece of vintage um, trim that I picked up at, the, at an antique store. Getting all the edges even and then it's onto my little bunny. Just cutting a piece of this film or this um, water soluble stabilizer. Just enough to cover that bunny. And it's going to um, draw it or outline it. Trace it. I'm using a, my Uniball pen for this and then I'm just going to pin this into place where I want it um, now this uniball pen works well to trace on this I found that other ballpoint pens don't really work very well on this film so you might want to do some experience experiment with that um, I'm going to be using my free motion zigzag for this and I'm going to be leaving um, or having my foot horizontal to this line and it's gonna go back and forth like a zigzag does. My zigzag is set at five, width of five, and of course the it's a zero width, because I'm just at there, the feed dogs are dropped and I'm doing the movement on this. But I'm doing it horizontal to the line, and I just move it a little bit maybe um, vertically just to get just more dimension there. And it just looks like fur. It's just a really fun technique. It takes a little bit of practice, just basically remembering to get keeping that horizontal but now I'm doing some vertical and we just wanted some a little bit of a crazy hairdo on this little bunny and then again making sure this is horizontal if you're not comfortable with your free motion this you can certainly just slow stitch just doing a, a, a outline stitch on this bunny with slow stitching would be really cute too this and you can just go right through this water call this water soluble stabilizer even if you're doing um, slow stitching it's just a fun way an easy way to to get your design on your on your um on your piece sometimes i mean there's water soluble pens but sometimes they don't always work the way you want them to this has been something that i find works really well so give it a try I'm on to um, getting that last ear done. I don't think I show it. But then I'm going to be doing a, just a straight stitch free motion to get the rest of this detail in. And notice when I'm doing this, these whiskers, I'm just traveling on the, the original outline of the bunny so I don't have to, to knot my thread all the time. It's just an easy way. I, I try to do that as often as I can to find to figure out a way to travel right on my design so I don't have to, to to break my thread got it all done all the detail is in there and I gently tear this water soluble away um, you don't want to distort the stitches sometimes I just use my scissor in there just to cut that and this to tear it away there's going to be little pieces especially in the detailed areas that the film is left on um, and then you'll see what I, I do is I'll, I'll spray, spray it with water. I don't show the spraying it, but I spray it with water and then just take a paper towel and put it and just iron over the top and it'll come off on your paper towel. Just really easy. On to finishing this little bag, the zipper. Um, this is an easy way of putting a zipper in a pouch. I lay the zipper face down right on my outer piece and then I sandwich that zipper right in between the lining and the outer piece having making sure that zipper is lined up on the top and on the side on the left hand side and I'll stitch that using my zipper foot I and everybody's zipper foot is different but my zipper foot if I sew down the middle it's a quarter of an inch and you want a quarter of an inch seam for this now notice I did a little tuck there on the lining. For some reason your lining just kind of grows and I just usually give a little tuck on that. It doesn't seem to even sh really show in the finished product. Now notice that my zipper is longer. 
it works best if your zipper is a couple inches longer than your product project just taking that to my iron and just ironing that lining away from the zipper as well as the front and I'll top stitch this now just by about a quarter of an inch away from the zipper onto the other side again you want to line it up on the left hand side I usually put a wonder clip right at the beginning there just getting that zipper lined up on the top and the side then I'll open that zipper all the way and put a couple more clips in making sure that zipper is right up at the top and then I'll add my lining piece again your lining piece is going to be so the right sides are together and that zipper is sandwiched in between and then just reclip getting everything once again lined up on the top and then I'll take this again to my sewing machine I don't show, show at this time but I use that zipper foot again and getting that um, quarter of an inch and then I'll iron the lining down the front down and stitch it again this is top stitch it and I've got this piece you want to make sure your zipper is open but not off the edge in this next one I've got the zipper open on one side that zipper gets towards the lining I always put this is my first clip right there and then lining up my zipper or excuse me my lining and lining up the outer And this one you want to have that zipper folded and the teeth are towards the lining and that always gets a little clip I do leave an opening in the lining of about six inches and I, I you'll see it I usually mark it because I don't want to forget to leave it open and that's where I'll start and finish And I'll go all the way around and finish at the other opening. I'm at my sewing machine. I just wanted to share with you here. This is that one part that you want to make sure that that zipper is folded towards the lining. I, I'm taking about a three eighths of an inch, um, right? My, my um, seam allowance there. But right there, I usually stop and I'll walk my, I think it's a flywheel, whatever that thing is called. I'll walk my machine over that. I don't want to hit my needle on that that those teeth so that's usually what I'll do it's just an easy way to make sure everything gets um, you don't have a little accident and everything goes smooth and then I'm on to the finishing this I do want to box the corners and so I'm opening my seams pinching it and then um, with my fingers and then I'll just I'll just sew across both the lining and the outer bag gets a boxed cut off the rest of that zipper that I don't need cut this bulk away from the corners and now the big reveal just pushing that all the way through I like to fold my um, lining down and then just pressing that and then I'll close this with my sewing machine you can also do this by hand we're finished I wanted just to add a little something to that zipper pull I have my my garment pins here or my bulb pins tons of different colors I'm just going to use a dark brown one um, and then I'm going to add a couple little buttons to it I have a little cream button and then a little a pink button that's on a shank and just add that to the zipper pull I hope you enjoyed this everybody I have some pictures at the end just so you can see some of the details um, I do have the other projects this is the little um, journal cover these are all in my Etsy store the pillow and then I do have my my wall hanging too Bye, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this today. Have a great week. Bye for now.